alkalosis can be understood. See, CO2 plus H2O, they form H2CO3, that is carbonic acid, and from that H plus and HCO3 minus is formed. Obviously, the reaction can also go in the reverse direction. Now, if there is increase in H plus in the blood, then that will lead to acidosis. If there is decrease in H plus in the blood, that will lead to alkalosis. So, see, the, what is the normal value of CO2 in the blood? It's 33 to 45, okay? And what is normal value of HCO3 minus in the blood? It's between 22 to 28. Now, let's quickly see the types of acidosis and alkalosis. The first one is respiratory acidosis. Now, it occurs due to increase in carbon dioxide, okay? Now, see, what, what is the normal value of carbon dioxide? Between 33 to 45. So, if the carbon dioxide level is more than 45, then it will lead to respiratory acidosis. Now, the second one is respiratory alkalosis. Now, if the level of carbon dioxide is less than 33, then it will lead to respiratory alkalosis. Now, see, if the carbon dioxide increases, see, if the carbon dioxide here increases, then it will lead to increase in H plus ion and that will lead to acidosis. If the carbon dioxide decreases, then the H plus ion will also decrease and that will lead to alkalosis. So that's why uh, the changes in CO2 causes acidosis and alkalosis. Now, we now we'll discuss metabolic alkalosis, alkalosis and metabolic acidosis. Now see, if there is increase in HCO3 minus, it will result in metabolic alkalosis. That is, if there is the level of HCO3 minus is greater than 28, then it will cause metabolic alkalosis. See, if the HCO3 minus increases, it will bind with H plus and this will lead to decrease in free hydrogen ions. Now as the hydrogen ion decreases, this will lead to metabolic alkalosis. The same, uh, the opposite is true for metabolic acidosis. When HCO3 minus decreases, that is less than 22, the H plus ion remains free in the blood and that will increase, uh, means that will decrease the pH and leads to acidosis. So that was about respiratory and metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. Now, if the patient is having respiratory as okay see you know kidney and lungs they are best friend okay if the patient is having respiratory acidosis then the compensatory mechanism will be metabolic alkalosis if the patient is having respiratory alkalosis then the compensatory mechanism will be metabolic acidosis okay if the patient is having metabolic alkalosis compensatory mechanism will be respiratory alkalosis oh, sorry acidosis Okay, and if the patient is having metabolic acidosis, then the compensatory mechanism will be respiratory alkalosis. Okay, so see, if there is problem in lungs, that is a respiratory problem, then kidneys will compensate. Okay, kidneys will try to maintain the homeostasis. If there is problem with kidneys, then lung will try to compensate. Okay, so okay, the, here is a small scenario. See that will help you to understand the situation in a better way see if the ph okay see the normal value of ph is between 7.35 to 7.45 okay now in patient one let's say the ph is 7.28 the hco3 minus 2 minus sorry hco3 minus level is 16 and co2 co2 level is 28 now obviously the ph is less than the normal it means there is acidosis going on okay first analyze that now, HCO3 minus level is less. See, the normal was 22 to 28. So, if HCO3 minus level decreases, what does it cause? It will cause metabolic acidosis. Okay. And see, what is the level of CO2 here? CO2 is 28. 28 means less than normal. And when CO2 decreases, it will cause respiratory alkalosis. So, this will result in respiratory alkalosis. Now, which one of these is main mechanism okay which one is causing the problem and which one is the compensatory mechanism so let's try to understand that see the main problem in patient is acidosis okay so it means the acidosis is occurring under the effect of hco3 minus because see hco3 minus is causing metabolic acidosis so the acidosis is occurring due to hco3 minus and the respiratory alkalosis is the compensatory mechanism okay to balance the pH so again the one which produces its, its effect is the main mechanism and the one that tries, tries to compensate is compensatory so see in next case the pH is 7.48 okay and HCO3 minus level is 16 
CO2 level is again 22. See the HCO3 minus and CO2 level are, are kept same. But in this case the pH is 7.48. Obviously this is just for example okay the number number taken are just abbreviatory. They are not the exact values. So see 7.48 is the uh, pH. Now obviously it is more than the normal so it means there is alkalosis here okay. Now HCO3 minus is less so it means it will cause metabolic acidosis okay and CO2 level is uh, obviously it is greater uh, sorry it's less so it will cause respiratory alkalosis. So here the main problem with patient is alkalosis it means the effect is due to respiratory alkalosis okay so here the main problem is respiratory alkalosis and the compensatory mechanism is metabolic acidosis again the one that is producing the, its effect on the blood pH is the main problem okay it's the main cause and the other one is the compensatory mechanism trying to balance the pH now having understood this let's go into the detail of each one of them see the first one is respiratory acidosis it's very easy and also respiratory alkalosis is easy so the main thing that you need to know for respiratory acidosis is that it will cause vasodilation cerebral vasodilation and it can result in cerebral edema cerebral edema now the main thing for respiratory alkalosis is that it can result in signs of tetany how see the protein in the blood see during respiratory alkalosis the protein in the blood will lose H plus ions okay the H plus ion will leave the protein and they will go into the plasma so the protein will have COO minus charge on them because H plus has left the protein so all this COO minus will bind with calcium and this leads to decrease in free serum calcium okay free calcium decreases because the calcium binds to COO minus charge on the protein and due to decrease in calcium we will see the signs of tetany so this is all about respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis now let's move on to metabolic alkalosis see metabolic alkalosis are of two type either they are chloride responsive or they are chloride resistant now the cause of chloride responsive metabolic alkalosis are mainly vomiting and loop and thiazide diuretics while the cause uh, the main cause of chloride resistant metabolic alkalosis is mineralocorticoid excess that is aldosterone now let's try to understand why they are chloride responsive and chloride resistant see in both this cause either vomiting or loop diuretics or thiazide there will be volume depletion okay there will be volume depletion that's the main thing and also there will be decrease in chloride level in the body while due to mineralocorticoid excess there will be volume excess okay there will be ex excess of volume and also the chloride level will be increased so when you give normal saline to these patients normal saline okay it will improve the volume depletion and it also it will improve the chloride level because normal uh, saline contains chloride so this patient can be treated with normal saline that is they will show response to normal saline okay which contains chloride that's why the name is chloride responsive now here in this patient already the volume is increased okay and also there is increased in chlorine so even if you give normal saline in this patient that will that will not improve the condition okay that's why this is chloride resistant that's why the name chloride responsive and chloride resistant now now we'll move on to metabolic acidosis see metabolic acidosis are obviously of two types normal anion gap and increased anion gap see what's the main difference between both in increased anion gap metabolic acidosis there is another anionic anionic acid produced in body anionic acid produced in the body see there is some different kind of anionic pro uh, acid produced in the body which leads to increased anion gap while in normal anion gap there is no anionic acid is produced that's the main thing I'll, I'll definitely explain that in detail so first let's try to understand what is anion gap okay see anion gap is basically sodium minus chloride and HCO3 minus bicarbonate so see let's see if the let's say if the normal level of the normal level of uh, sodium is 140 okay the normal level of chloride is let's say 100 
the normal level of uh, HCO3 minus is 26 let's say so it will be 140 minus 126 that is 14 now this is the anion gap 14 the value between 10 to 14 is considered as normal anion gap now whenever the HCO3 minus decreases okay whenever the HCO3 minus decreases it is replaced by Cl minus that is chloride because see whenever the negative charge decreases it has to balance it has to be balanced with another negative charge so let's say the chloride level goes from 26 to 16 okay let's say from 26 to 16 so what will be the uh, change in sorry 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 the if let's say if the uh, HCO3 minus level goes from at 26 to 16 then what will be the change in chloride level it will go from 100 to 110 to maintain the anion gap see let's say let's keep the value here if the chloride level will increase okay and the HCO3 minus level will decrease so again in this case the anion gap is maintained that is again it remains 14 but in case if the HCO3 minus goes from HCO3 minus level goes from 26 to 16 but there is instead of increasing chloride anion okay instead of increasing chloride anion the body is producing some anionic acid okay to compensate for the loss of HCO3 minus then that will not re that will result in increased anion gap see HCO3 minus level decreases but chloride level does not increase then that will result in increased anion gap okay that will result in increased anion gap so in simply remember that normally HCO3 minus should be replaced by chloride but in case of increased anion gap metabolic acidosis HCO3 minus is not replaced by chloride but it is replaced by anionic acids okay that results in increased anion gap now here are the cause some cause of normal anion gap first one is renal tubular acidosis we, we will discuss this in another video the second is diarrhea then cholesteramine and saline infusion now diarrhea and cholesteramine both of them leads to loss of HCO3- and that leads to metabolic acidosis while saline infusion uh, causes uh, they, they inactivate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and that leads to metabolic acidosis so we will now discuss some causes of increased anion gap we will not discuss all the cause but some confusing kind of causes okay so see the first one is aspirin now see what does aspirin do aspirin initially it works on the CNS respiratory centers okay it works on the CNS respiratory center and it stimulates the CNS respiratory center which leads to hyperventilation and respiratory alkalosis okay because there is hyperventilation so there will be decreased co2 and it leads to respiratory alkalosis now after few hours see for first three hours for first three hours it will cause it will cause respiratory means respiratory alkalosis and after three hours it will reach inside the cell and it will destroy the mitochondria okay it is toxic for mitochondria obviously this is not for normal aspirin dose for it is for tox, uh, toxic doses of aspirin that is aspirin poisoning see if it will go into the cell it will destroy the mitochondria that will ca cause disruption of oxidative phosphorylation and due to that the cell will undergo anaerobic glycolysis and will result in increased lactic acid formation again there is disruption of mitochondria so the oxidative phosphorylation is disrupted and that leads to anaerobic glycolysis in the cell and increase in lactic acid that's why this will cause increased anion gap uh, metabolic acidosis because see there is another acid produced in the body that will take the place of HCO3 minus so this was about aspirin for first three hours it is only respiratory alkalosis for next I means after three hours it, it is mixed respiratory alkalosis with metabolic acidosis another important cause of increased anion gap metabolic acidosis is ethylene glycol also known as antifreeze now see ethylene glycol is converted by alcohol dehydrogenase into glycolic acid and oxalic acid again the these are newly formed anionic acid which will take the place of HCO3- minus instead of chloride that's why they will increase the anionic gap now the treatment okay we'll discuss treatment later 
Now another similar kind of uh, similar similar kind of chemical is methyl alcohol, which is also known as wood alcohol. Again, alcohol dehydrogenase will work on the methyl alcohol, and it will convert it into formic acid. Now this formic acid is uh, it will damage the optic nerve. So the treatment of both ethylene glycol and methyl alcohol is similar. First, give either give IV ethanol, okay. IV ethanol. See what will IV ethanol do? The alcohol dehydrogenase has higher affinity for ethanol. So when you give IV ethanol, instead of working on ethylene glycol or methyl alcohol, it will start working on ethanol. Okay, and that's why these harmful products will not be formed. Another treatment is fomepizole. Okay, now fomepizole it directly inhibits alcohol dehydrogenase, and again these metabolic products are not formed. So that's the reason why we give IV ethanol and fomepizole. Now, see the main thing for increased anion gap is again that there is production of another anionic acid, either it can be lactic acid or keto acid or any other acid that we discussed. So when these are formed, they will replace the decrease in HCO3- ion instead of chloride and that will result in increased anion gap. So this was all about acidosis and alkalosis.